what I hope to do is to really challenge people that when they see that sunset and when they see the sunrise and the first snowflake that 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 is a gift from God and that if we don't take care of it that it will go away. I guess I've painted all my life. Um, it's something I always enjoyed. I started out as a realist um, because I truly believe that to be a good artist that you had to learn the rules before you could break them. So I spent many, many years um, trying to perfect the drawing. After I was married, I really threw myself into teaching and to painting and uh, was quite lucky. Got into several national exhibitions, won several awards, was one of several Americans that was invited to show my work in France. But we were blessed with three wonderful children. I've known Susan Swartz for about 30 years and I've watched her progress as an artist and been a fan of hers uh, over that period of time. Uh, her story is amazing. Uh, she was quite a student uh, at College of Art and had uh, won a number of shows and gotten considerable recognition. But as the family arrived, she sort of gave up uh, her career to focus on her family. And then, of course, when the children grew, and moved out of the house, she was able to refocus in her art. I think Susan is part of a long tradition of American art, which I call the American Sublime. And it goes back to the paintings of uh, uh, the Hudson River School, and then going to Bierstadt and Moran, uh, the great painters of the West. What the American Sublime does is tries to uh, capture the spirit and the wildness and the beauty of the American wilderness as it disappears in front of our eyes. First married, I started out as a portrait painter. I used to love to do animals. Worked in the pastels an awful lot on a velour paper. I was trained in oils, but with some nudging from my husband and the fact that I was getting migraine headaches from the turpentines and that, I moved into watercolors, which I spent 15 years in watercolors. So I went through my barn stage because we lived in um, New Jersey, we'd go over to Andrew Wyeth's countryside and painted barns and got into pheasants and Canada geese, loved to walk in the pumpkin fields and see the pumpkins. And then there were flowers, I loved the flowers. We had 60 feet of rose trellises in the backyard and many, many tiger lilies and wonderful fences. Hydrangeas, oh my goodness, the hydrangeas were amazing with the wonderful colors. So then did many still lifes. And the more I spent in Utah, um, the more I started working in bigger brushes and palette knives and the canvases just kept growing and growing and growing. I started to paint large and large canvases of aspens. And I was just very fortunate the Utah Symphony picked up on using some of my work on their bulletins and that led to getting into um, several of the galleries and after that um, I was showing in one of the galleries, a solo showing, and at that time I was invited to be the environmental artist for the Salt Lake Olympics. And then we became very much involved with an organization called Olympic Aid, and it is now called Right to Play. Olympic Aid is an amazing organization which was founded by Johan Koss, who is an Olympic gold medal speed skater. And what we decided to do was uh, raise some money. And so I donated a painting, and the painting was framed um, and signed by um, the Olympic gold medalist winners and a lot of um, the athletes. And it went to auction, and it was quite exciting because all of a sudden it was up to $155,000. And it was exciting for me because it was something that I, I did with my hands, and the entire profit went to Olympic Aid. They go into third world countries. They use the um, sports to enable the young adults to engage in fair play and getting along with one another. 
one of the very exciting stories that Johan talked about when he came back from Israel, that a Palestinian father came up and threw his arms around him and told him if it had not been for right to play, his 12-year-old son would have been a suicide bomber. One of my favorite stories is The Great Gadsby, and there's a line in there that I think fits Susan to a T. It says something like, there is something gorgeous about her, some heightened sensitivity to the promise of life, and an extraordinary gift of hope. And I think that describes Susan. She is a remarkable person, a great artist, and a, just a very wonderful individual with a terrific heart who's out there to help humanity to help our community. And tonight we have the opportunity to recognize her as a fabulous artist and to celebrate her skill and her style and the ability she has to bring life to a canvas. After the excitement of the Olympics, I was um, very fortunate to be picked up by one of the top galleries in Park City, and that is the Phoenix Gallery. And that led to um, Aspen. Elliott Yearly Gallery and this was quite exciting for me because I was asked to exhibit and have a solo show in one of the most prestigious galleries on Martha's Vineyard, the Carol Craven Gallery. And a gentleman asked that when my show was done if he could buy my borrow my press book. And in the press book he began to read about my faith and my painting where I sign all my work GTG which means glory to God because what I truly wanted to do was paint what God created. And this wonderful gentleman that I did not know at the time, his name's Preston Williams, was a retired ethics professor at Harvard Divinity School. And he approached me and asked me if I would be willing to come and speak to both the faculty and students, uh, be an artist in residence, and have an art, exhi art exhibit at the Harvard Divinity School. This was a magnificent opportunity for me because it blended not only my gift of painting, but also I was able to use my faith in God and to be able to talk about why I painted. Uh, today we're welcoming an artist who's uh, been sharing her love of the natural world and her love of God as well through her painting for over 30 years. So we're proud to welcome Susan Schwartz here to the Divinity School. Susan. Susan. Thank you. It's really an honor for me to be here. Um, as an artist, I'm usually asked three questions. How do I paint? How do I create my paintings? And where do I get my inspiration? What I'm not usually asked is why I paint. And why I paint is why I am here this week. Picasso once stated that if God could create the elephant, the cat, and the giraffe, how could I presume to invent on such a scale? So if God was the creator, and all I had to do was interpret, I had a new freedom in front of me, and I've been breaking the rules ever since. Instead, I've prayed to be able to interpret the beauty around me and open the hearts and minds to those who do not know God. I sign all of my work, GTG, Glory to God. And that is why I paint. In intellectual terms, my journey has become less linear. I have moved out of my realistic phase, and my work is much more impressionistic. To place my work in the context of art history, I am a small part of a long tradition of artists that have dedicated their lives and work to the glory of God. After the excitement of knowing that I was really going to be have my first museum showing, it was like, okay, we have all these walls, now what am I going to do to fill it? In Utah, I'm, I'm known for my aspens. Fall is such an amazing time of year here, and you have the reds, and then you also have the golds and the aspens. And being able to be in my more impressionistic stage and maybe break away from the beautiful blue skies or the wonderful sunsets. And since purple is one of my very favorite colors and you'll find it in all of my artwork, I ventured on um, what is now the cover of my book, Natural Revelations, and is one of my favorite paintings. It looks like there it's one solid color, but I must tell you, it must have eight or nine layers of different 
blues and purples that I kept putting on top of one another to get the brilliant blue that I did. And then the golds of the aspens made a um, very exciting foreground for it. And then of course I wanted to show that I could, um, I love to do water lilies. And I've painted water lilies for years. To walk into the hall and see my paintings hanging in the most magnificent structure, 55 foot tall, is breathtaking. It brings tears to my eyes. Part of the Utah Museum of Fine Arts mission is to host exhibitions of works by important Utah artists. And in the case of Susan Schwartz, it's a fortunate convergence of an artist who's very serious about her craft, who has something important to say about the world in which we live, the environment that we've inherited and that we'll, we will leave to future generations. She truly wants to make the world a better place, and painting is her way to express her spirituality, her passion, her interest in leaving a, a, better, a better world behind than the one that we inherited. I think what's exciting is to watch the progression of Susan's style over the years um, as she moves towards a more abstract style in some of her later works. We see that her capturing the essence of her subject, uh, distilling it down into the, the purest sense of what she's trying to capture. Her work is grounded in the, uh, the move towards abstraction that began in the mid 20th century uh, and many of the same philosophies that grounded the, the great abstractionist. We see her juxtaposing color. We see her taking uh, shapes and distilling them down to their essence. So her work is, is exciting. It's evidenced by the many exhibitions that she's held, by the many collections in which uh, her work resides. So the Museum of Fine Arts is pleased and delighted to host this exhibition of Susan's work.